everybody, welcome back to the Reese Dog channel. Today, I have returned from my spring break. Um, well, actually, I, it is, like, specifically my spring break because I decided, uh, I'm not going to, um, because that's when I decided I'm going to split up, or at least just give me a little bit of extra time away from YouTube because I was busy. But since I have nothing on my list to do today, I can just you know, record videos. So, you know, here I am in, in class learning about World War One, and, uh, and I was told that I should shed a little light on this and on the subject and talk about it. And then my four minutes of time ran out and I didn't get to finish everything. So, so today I get to finish everything. So for this time I can go into more detail. So here I have the map of Europe. Um, by the way, this video is dedicated to my, uh, my class, my, my social studies class. And, uh, essentially today I'm explaining what events happened in World War I, le what led to it. And just so you can get a visual of, a visual of World War I, which is something that, that, uh, my class, or, or, Quite possibly the people watching haven't really gotten. So, we're starting with 1910. This country right here, Austria-Hungary, and it's Bosnia, with a very important city. Uh, well, right here, known as, well, around here, known as Sarajevo. Now, in Bosnia, not only are there the Bosniaks and the Croats, you also have Serbs, which come from this country called Serbia. And the new Austrian leaders w had like a parade in the city where Franz Ferdinand, like the heir to the throne, was there. And the Serbian Black Hand Society did not like that one bit. And then they decided they're going to kill Franz Ferdinand. So they did. And then he died. And then, you know, the Serbian government was kind of had a little bit of part in this assassination. So Austria's like, hey, hung, hey, uh, Serbia, we don't really, well, Austria, Hungary, Serbia, please give us some money, and like, you know, can we take a look, well, kind of, you, you really need to pay up for what, what just happened, because you had a part to do in it, and Serbia's like, no, of course not, why would I do that? So Austria gets mad, and then these two, just so you know, it's war. These two countries go to war. So, these countries are at war now. Austria, Hungary, and Serbia. And remember, Austria here is part of the Central Powers, and Serbia is part of the Entente. So now, these two countries are at war. And because Serbia, and actually Montenegro joins in too, uh, Serbia, Montenegro, and Russia all have many Slavic people living there, and they are and they're all kind of friends with each other. And they decided they didn't like Austria being at war, so they declared war. We're going to use uh, we'll just use this color here for the when the Entente declares war. So there we go. Now. So you see Russia and Montenegro join in against Austria-Hungary. And then Germany does not like that one bit and declares war against Russia. So, and then France doesn't like that either. Well, really, France just wants to join in the war because, you know, they're French and they're France and they're everything, you know, uh, so, France also now, they declare war on Germany as well, so, just a little, so, Germany needs, so, Germany has a plan here, Germany is, like, the leader of the central powers, and Germany is one of the most powerful countries in the war, uh, so, Germany decides, that since Russia is a huge nation, which actually I only covered, colored in this part, 
really it spreads like all out, like all the way over here. Uh, just so you can get an idea of how huge Rush is. It takes them a long time. Jury thought it would take them a long time to get their troops ready to go to war. And Germany decided, well, let's go over to the west and let's knock out France before this gets any, any worse. And that way, and that way, if it gets any worse, you know, we can take out France early and then move our whole army to go defeat Russia. So the two biggest powers of the war are knocked out, and Austria, I'm sure, can deal with, with Serbia. I mean, with Serbia, yeah. And that's what that's what Germany is thinking. Now, France has something called the Maginot Line. So we're go we're gonna draw this with red, I guess, right here. I'm pretty sure it's like around here. Essentially, it's up against the the German border, and it's a it's a line that has lots of defenses and lots of soldiers, so that Germany doesn't attack France. And Germany decides. If they're going to try and do this, war, get this war fast, fastly done, take out France early, they can't spend any time fighting around those defenses. Now you see, since their defenses extend all the way to their borders, how do they get around those? Well, they could go, go through Switzerland, but there's way too many mountains there. If they want to do this fast, they got to go through Belgium and Luxembourg, and that's when the Germans decide, let's do it. So now. When the Germans like are invade, like when other countries are invading other countries in this, I'm not going to draw perfectly how the invasion went, but so you can get a little visual. Germany went like Neil and went ahead, cut through Belgium and Luxembourg. So now, Belgium and Lu I'm pretty sure Belgium and Luxembourg now are or Germany, and Germany starts going, you know, starts taking over parts of France. And the, now the French are going to have to worry about, you know, the new German invasion. So I'm pretty sure the fighting, like, they get around here. And Britain doesn't like that they've just invaded Belgium. So now Britain is going to declare war on Germany. So they just go ahead and declare war and also same thing for for Belgium they go ahead declare war on Germany too so now so now Germany is a little bit more into France and they're trying to take it over now France does like dig in and what I mean by that is they they get like their own little trench system. I'm pretty sure this is some. So essentially they build trenches. It's just you know, just so you have an idea. This isn't perfect, but so, so you have an idea. You have the trench system with no man's land in between. And I'm pretty sure you know how a trench warfare works. You have one trench, you have the other trench, there are machine guns all along the trench, you've got the artillery and the bad conditions, and all of that. And well, you see, there's lots of fighting going on now. Germany wants to make it over here to Paris, the capital of France, so they can knock them out of the war. Because if they take out the capital, most likely France is going to surrender. Germany, all the, Germany is also still at war with Belgium. So, and these nations. But Russia actually is a little bit quicker than Germany thought. And Russia gets ready for war. And Russia decides they're going to push into Austria-Hungary. So they take a little bit of its eastern half. Boom. Now, Germany doesn't like this one bit. So Germany mobilizes troops to the east and into Austria to go help the Austrians defend against the, the new Russian invaders. Also, down here, you know, the guys who started it all, yeah, Serbia. Uh, now, Serbia, you know, they're at war. So now, Serbia actually, I guess the Austrians are, are not very good at, you know, planning how to, how to fight, or making good battle plans. I don't know what went wrong here, but Serbia actually managed to start fighting back, 
and they even pushed into Austrian territory. But, uh, yeah, so now the Serbians are pushing back, and Austria uh, looks like they're in the in a bad situation here, which they kind of are, so. Now, moving on, um, now moving on, uh, Germany, you know, they have to start with the Russians somewhere, so they invade, so they invade Russia, so we're just going to, you know, just, I'm sorry, if this, if you think this is lazy, just, you know, and the Austrians do a little bit of pushing back too, so. Anyway, like, long story short, they start invading Russia. Germany does a real, apparently does a, like, in, at least in this war, Germany does a good job at invading Russia, like the next one. But that's not this video. So, they do a really good job in invading Russia for right now. And taking out parts of it. And, you know, great job, Germany. So, now, you may be thinking, well, there can only be two central powers, and then you're right. There can't be. So, the now let's focus on this area. You see two countries here? Well, you see a lot, but you actually see, more specifically, the Ottoman Empire and Bulgaria. These nations decide, now, Bulgaria had just, like, a little few years earlier, they had just finished a war with Serbia. They finished the Second Balkan War. And Bulgaria lost. And Bulgaria is kind of mad about that. And they don't like that. So they're going to go to war with Serbia again. Because even though they don't like the Ottomans or the Aust Austria-Hungary, they're going to help them because they don't like Serbia anymore. And they're going to go take them out. So, yeah. Bulgaria and uh, Austria go ahead and they start taking out that like they take out Serbia these as I as I said before these borders aren't perfect but there's something um the Serbs like so and also Montenegro is taken out so all Austria has to do now is go to war with Russia except for they don't because Italy decides to be Italy and they think that they can go to war with Austria Hungary and will actually do a, a very good job. In the beginning, the Austrians push in a little bit. And then Italy says, no, that's not how things work here in Italy. We're supposed to win in Italy. So then Italy does a little bit of pushing back. And the Austrians said, no, we're more powerful. And then they actually do some damage. That's pretty much all the fighting in Italy summarized. Uh, that's that's kind of what happens in Italy. Uh, and when I said this stuff about the Ottomans, now the Ottomans, no idea why, want to go to war with Russia, so they blew up some ships, and they went to war. So, just... Sorry. Yeah. The, the Ottomans, they declare war on Russia. And the Ottomans decide, we're going to go push into Russia. So, they do. And then, I'm pretty sure, uh, the Ottomans, you know, it gets cold. And they're normally used to fighting in the desert. And they're like, what's this thing you call them? You call it cold? Then they discovered what it means to, to be freezing. So when they got, you know, a little further north. And then they had to retreat. Now, Britain is in the war. And Britain isn't just Britain. For some reason, the British like taking over useless islands and places in the, all over the world. That includes Egypt. And parts of Arabia. Like, you know, around here. So, just going to go ahead and fill this in. And then the, well, actually, the Ottomans on this, so. And then the British decide, let's go take out these Ottomans. Because, you know, they're on the central powers now. They're in the central powers. We need to go take them out. So, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure, uh, well, 
I'm also sure that not only it was there like fighting down here, you know, Britain, numerous invasions. They also tried to land. The British also tried to land in Kuwait and tried to get to like Bag Baghdad, which is somewhere around here in Iraq, but they were stopped and the town of Kut and taken out. But yeah, so there's fighting in the there's fighting in the Middle East now between the Ottomans and the British. Uh, if you didn't realize, you know. The British kind of win. Do I know how? I don't know exactly how, but they do. So, yeah, good to know. Uh, now, there is one more country that's going to join the war. And that is Greece, you know. Greece, Turkey, they don't get along. They really don't like each other. So, Greece is stuck between, do they join the Central Powers or do they not? And they decide, let's not join the Central Powers. No way I'm teaming up with these two. And they decide, let's go to war. So they do. Now, I'm not going to say that everything is in like the order that it is, but yeah, not everything is in the order that it is, but in the parts that I do talk about, it's pretty much straightforward and all the stuff I tell you, I have learned. Trust me, I don't make this stuff up. So now, Greece is at war with the Ottomans and Bulgaria. Oh yeah, and uh, for now it's 1917. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, 1916 tanks became a thing. But uh, 1917, and here's where, where it starts getting interesting. Not only does it look bad for the Central Powers, because Germany is losing in, uh, in France. Uh, you see, there are also two... Good things and bad things for the for each side. Good thing for the Entente. So you see, uh, you ever wondered why Russia became the Soviet Union for a time? Well, that's because this guy in Vladimir Lenin he decided, hmm, communism is better than the Russian, you know, monarchy, the Russian leaders we have now. So we're going to, so we're going to revolt and then start a huge civil war. So they do. And now Russia can't fight both World War One and the Civil War with itself. So Russia kind of has to uh, kind of has to get out of World War One because you know if they don't, then there's then it's for sure the com the communists are gonna you know take them out. It's actually the communists who end up getting out of the war so they could fight, but whatever. So now Russia's the Soviet Union. And I would change it to the color green, but I need I need to focus on more important things, like Germany liking their uh, U boats. Now I am going to bring us to this area, and you may notice something in the west of or on this side of the world. You see, there's this little thing that you that probably most of my most of the people watching this live in. You know, it's called that. Uh, you know that United States. Yeah, that's the thing. So, and they are constantly, like, they've been trading supplies to Britain. Also, Britain blockading this area so Germany can't get any supplies. So, Germans are also starving. But, uh, but United States, you know, that's a thing. And they have ships going constantly from USA to Britain. And Germany really likes their submarines. And they found this ship called the Lusitania. And it has lots of British people and Americans on it. And the Germans decide, why not launch a torpedo at it and sink it? That won't cause any problems for our country. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So then they sink the Lusitania. The Lusitania dies, and lots of people on it. And then the United States, it's not really happy about that. Now, this was in 1915. 1917, they decide, you know what? Let's get involved. Let's go. Let's go give Germany a big whooping. So then they do. They join the war. They go over to France, and they start uh, battling the Germans. But now, even though there's no more fighting in Russia, there, even though there's no more fighting in Russia, there's still fighting in France. But France has Fran French troops, which you may not think at first uh, are very effective. But but they are effective when they're getting lots out from the British. Not to mention there's British troops now, and also American troops who are very, very powerful. So now Germany, even though they only have one front to deal with, it's a pretty hard to fight front. 
because Britain has soldiers from all over their, from all over the world, you know, all these soldiers are like well trained and well equipped, and uh, at this point, Germany, they're kind of losing the war, so, you know, they do, and then Germany decides, you know what, November 11th, let's just sign a treaty that says that we shouldn't, uh, that we shouldn't continue this, so, uh, I'm pretty sure the Ottomans surrendered first, followed by the Bulgarians, followed by Austria and Hungary, followed by Germany. And the Great War, or World War I, ended. How did this end up? Well, we're gonna have to rewind and make some little changes to the map. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is about the map when we started. So here's what happens. Here's the changes. First of all, there's a little change here. France gets this. Uh, also, Poland decides to become a thing. So, Poland becomes a thing. So, well, actually, they didn't decide. It was actually, um, what are they called? The Entente decided it. Poland becomes a thing. This is Poland now. And then, uh, the Czech Slovakia. Czech Slovakia decides to exist. Um, uh, Romania gets a little more territory. Austria is its own nation now. Um, Italy gains this, and I'm pretty sure like that, or like, you know, these uh, some of these islands, yeah, they gain that. Uh, um, Hungary, that's, that's what I was going to Hungary. Hungary becomes independent, and Yugoslavia becomes a thing. So, uh, I, this is pretty close to the changes, you know, this is pretty much the changes in, uh, the European borders. And, you know, this is what it looks like, or, well, actually, uh, Lithuania, and, like, Latvia, and, like, Estonia also decide to be become a thing. So they become their own countries as well. But uh, yeah, these are pretty much the changes. And you know, the Ottomans kind of lose their empire and now they're just Turkey. Uh, they don't have no, they don't have, uh, they don't have an empire anymore. They've lost it. Britain decides to mess with the Middle East and gain a bunch of territories that totally won't cause any problems in the future whatsoever. Uh, so the Central Powers, they're devastated, they they owe the Allies a lot, some of the Central Powers don't even exist anymore, so, yeah. Uh, so, that's pretty much, uh, World War One. and I'm sure there won't be any more, I'm sure we call it World War One because there was only one World War. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.